execution of the previous lecture because of some new comments. The biophysical aspects of the ultrasound examination. The ultrasound examination is one of the commonest modalities used since decades. Why it is being used for so long? Because of some reasons. One thing is it is safe, non-invasive diagnostic modality. Second thing is that it is cost-effective too, and the diagnostic yield of the ultrasound is maximum. Many routine ailments you can diagnose quite conveniently, conveniently at ultrasound examination on the bad side of the patient. Now, this is a pulse of energy which carry energy away from the central transmitter, the place where from where the waves are generated, electrical, the energy is transmitted from that place to the other medium, and there are two types of waves. One is the electromagnetic waves and the second is the mechanical waves. Electromagnetic waves they are also labeled as transverse waves and these travel from one place to other without requiring a medium in between. It means that they can propagate even through a vacuum, like radio waves, X-rays and the light waves. The mechanical waves they are also called the longitudinal waves and they require a medium for their propagation from one place to the other. And the example of the mechanical waves are the water waves as well as the sound waves. Now what are the sound waves? All those waves which we can hear with our ears, they are the sound waves. And the frequency of the sound waves is between 20 to 20,000 hertz. All those waves which have the frequency less than 20, they are the infrasound waves and those with frequency more than 20 seconds, they are the ultrasound waves. So our wave is a pulse of energy which can so the they are the mechanical waves which require a medium for their propagations and the frequency of the sound waves uh, you can see how the sound wave is between 20 to 20,000 hertz and that of the ultrasound waves that is more than the 20,000 hertz. The various characteristic features of the ultrasound waves, ultrasound beam is a non-ionizing longitudinal waves in which the signals they are recorded in the reflection mode rather than in the transmission mode as of electromagnetic waves. The ultrasound transducers that generate the ultrasound waves which enter into the body get reflected from the various body tissues and uh, we uh, make the picture by means of the reflection of the ultrasound waves. So the ultrasound waves they are not ionizing lungs of waves in which the signal they are recorded in reflection mode rather than in transmission mode like that. And short frequencies in the diagnostic equipments that range between 2 megahertz to 50 megahertz. Normally, all the waves with frequency more than 20,000 hertz they are labeled as the ultrasound waves. But in our instruments, the sound waves which are being used they are the high frequency sound waves. Their are frequencies between 2 megahertz to 15 megahertz. Mega means million cycles per second. So that equipments which we use, they have the frequency between 2 to 15 megahertz. So the piezoelectrical effect is the cornerstone of the diagnostic ultrasound process. All ultrasound transducers possess piezoelectrical properties which permit them to generate as well as the detect the ultrasound waves. So the piezoelectrical Crystals are there in the transducers or the group of the ultrasound machines. And these are of two types. One are those which are occurring by nature, that is naturally occurring crystals. 
they have the natural uh, capabilities of producing the ultrasound wave as well as by detecting the ultrasound to produce the bleach. And these are called the naturally occurring crystals. Example is the quartz crystals. But these days, our modern efficient transducers, they are grown in a manufacturing process and these are known as the synthetic crystals. Synthetic crystals, they are also labeled as the ceramic crystals. So the piezoelectric crystals are of two types. Either they are naturally occurring crystals, an example is the quartz crystal, or they are synthetically produced. Then synthetically produced uh, piezoelectric crystals, they are labeled as the ceramic crystals. Now, how ultrasound waves they are produced by these piezoelectric crystals? Whenever electrical current strikes the crystals, they are electro, uh, they are electronically stimulated, and they produce ultrasound waves by means of their vibrations. And when the electrical, when the ultrasound waves strike, the spot, those air that are used to have high these pictures. This is the transducer of the ultrasound machine. There's crystals, piezoelectrical crystals in the board or the transducer of the other machine. When you uh, make the machine on, electrical current strikes the crystal. The crystal being the bad conductor of electricity, they start vibrating. And the vibration of these crystals, they produce the ultrasound waves. And ultrasound waves, they enter into the body tissue. They get reflected from the various tissues of the body. After being reflected, they again enter the same probe or the same crystals. And now this crystal, when ultrasound wave will strike, this crystal it will start producing the electrical pulse. So one crystal, when electrical pulse, electrical current strikes this crystal, it produces the ultrasound wave. And at the same time, when the ultrasound waves strike the crystal, it produces the electrical pulse. So this is the dual characteristics of the one crystal. This dual phenomena is known as the piezoelectrical phenomena. That when electrical current falls on the crystal, it starts producing the ultrasound wave. And when ultrasound waves strike the crystal, it starts producing the electrical pulse. This is known as the piezoelectrical phenomena. So the crystals, they produce the ultrasound waves not continuously. They produce the ultrasound waves in bursts or pulses. The electrical current strike and the crystals vibrate and then they produce the ultrasound wave in a pulse or bursts. Then push the ultrasound generation to give a stop over here. Then the crystals start on receiving the ultrasound wave which are reflected back from the various pieces of the body. That is called the reception phase. So a phase in which the electrical current strikes the crystal and it produces the ultrasound wave that is called the generation or the transmission phase and the phase and the next phase in which the ultrasound crystal uh, growth crystal star uh, that is receiving the ultrasound wave which are reflected from the body tissue that is called the reception phase. And when the ultrasound waves they strike the crystal reflecting back from the various viscera, that produce the electrical voltage and that electrical voltage forms a cloud on the back of the screen and this uh, electron cloud that forms an image or picture on the screen. So this whole system of generating and receiving the ultrasound waves to produce an image is called the pulse ecosystem. And probe remains in generation mode for 1% of the time. Suppose that if we are working for 100 seconds, only for 1 second the probe will produce the ultrasound wave and for 99 seconds it will receive the ultrasound wave which are being reflected from the various crystals of the body. So the assessment of the return equals the because which are reflected back from the various viscera, they are in two modes. If one is the two amplitude, we determine the brightness of the color. The two reflections are there. Which places the reflection come up here, want to come bright, which places the reflections are there, one, one is bright, 